In this video I will demonstrate how to perform a Kaplan-Meier survival curve analysis. Now we use this technique when we're trying to determine the effect of time or the effect of some kind of categorical variable on time to an event or in most cases time to death but it doesn't necessarily have to be time to death it could be time to an event of some kind whether it's a heart attack or a stroke or an injury or an illness and we want to track the effect of time to see how long it takes uh, individuals to reach that event and also get a feel for how rapidly they may reach that event or how slowly, slowly they may reach that event. So typically we're going to generate a pictorial curve that gives us an idea of the effect of time on survival or time to an event. Now another way we can use this is we can actually separate out individuals based upon some categorical variable. Like for example, in the example we're going to use, we're going to look at um, time to death for breast cancer patients, but we're going to uh, separate them out based upon the type of treatment they might be receiving to see if the treatment has an effect on the survival length of time or how long it takes them uh, before they reach an event and to see if any of those treatments have an effect on that that passage of time relative to the event. So well, how we perform this analysis, and let me talk about the data a little bit. So I've got three columns of data. I've got uh, the treatment group. So these are uh, the types of treatments each of the individuals received. Um, the status column indicates uh, whether or not I've, I know that they have died. I know they've, they've had the event occur, or which is labeled by a 1, or if they're labeled by a 0, this is an example of censoring them. This is a case where the individual has dropped out of the study. Um, they may have died or may not have died, but I don't know what their status is. So these are individuals that may have dropped out for a certain period of time and I've lost track of them. So I, SPSS will basically censor them or remove them from the analysis not knowing what their, their actual outcome might be. The third column is the time. So this can be for individuals that I know have, have had the event occur. This would be how long it took for the event to occur. In this case, it's months. For individuals that are censored, this is the time at which I lost track of them. So this individual, at, at almost 80 months into the study, I've lost track of them. I don't know if they're still alive. I don't know if they died. And if they did die, I don't know when. So that's how we can track those individuals that might have dropped out of the study. So let's go ahead and run the analysis. So how we do that is go to the Analyze menu, go to Survival, and then choose Kaplan-Meier. Now in the time box is going to be the time, the time until the event occurred, in this case time to death in months. Status is where we enter in our status variable and this is again uh, individuals we know have had the event or individuals that we don't know have had the event, individuals we've lost track of. And so we need to define what value we're using to indicate the event occurred. So in this case we're using a 1 to indicate the person had the event occur and unfortunately in this case it's that they've died. So I enter in the value of 1 and it could be any value you want depending on how you're coding that variable and then click continue. And then the factor is how we're separating groups. Now you don't have to have a factor. You could just be studying the curve of survival without regard to any kind of group membership or any kind of treatment effect. But in this case, we do have a treatment and we want to study the effect that that treatment or treatments may have had on the survival curve. So we enter that into factor. So we basically have, have two parts to this um, analysis. Uh, we're going to look at the actual survival curve itself, or the survival estimate of how long it takes before um, the group of subjects um, reach the event. And then we can also try and compare the curves for each of our factors. So each factor will develop its own survival curve, and we can compare those curves to see if they are different from one another, to see if maybe treatment A has a different curve compared to treatment B and so on. 
Now one of the first things we typically do, and I've kind of skipped this step, is we need to examine the outcome, in this case time, for normal distribution. That's one of our assumptions. Now if it's not normally distributed, we can still do the analysis, but the descriptive statistics we look at will differ for an outcome that's normally distributed versus skewed. And so I'll, I'll talk about that when we look at the output. So that is one of the assumptions that we look at. And also our status needs to be dichotomous um, as well as um, we need to have a categorical factor. The factor needs to be a category. Alright, the next thing we can do uh, in the decision box here is click on the compare factor box and this is going to allow us to compare those treatment groups and their survival curves to see if they're different from one another. So we go to the test statistics box and we're going to click all three of these test statistics. Now they, they do the same thing, they're basically chi-square tests and what they're doing is comparing the survival curves for each of our groups but each one of these does it a little bit differently. So the log rank test for example tends to emphasize events that occur later in time. So as time passes it tends to compare the curves a little more heavily um, later on in, in a time course. Um, the Breslow test tends to look at or compare the curves with a little more heavy emphasis on earlier in time. So it tends to look at um, the differences early on in the time course. And the Tyrone Ware kind of is in between. It tends to look at more of the middle portion of the time course and tries to compare those three. So we can use these three tests together um, to kind of get a sense for are there differences among our groups on the curves? And if there are, where are those differences? Are they early on, are they in the middle, or are they later on? Okay, so once we click, get that done, we click Continue. And then we can click on the Options button. And then we're going to ask for survival tables. And so this is going to uh, actually lay out at each point in time where an event occurred. So it'll tell us at what point in time each person had the event or each person died. We're also going to get the mean and median survival data, so this would be the mean and median time that someone had an event occur. And then we can ask for some plots, and we're going to ask for the survival plot, so we're actually going to be able to see the survival curves. Then we click Continue, and then we click OK. So the output we can look at, first of all, in this first table, uh, gives us a sense for how many subjects um, were in each, each group, each level of the factor. So we had 104 subjects uh, getting drug A, 508 getting drug B, and 595 getting drug C. The next column tells us how many people actually had the event occur. So how many people actually died. And then in the last column it tells us how many people were censored. In other words, these are the people we lost track of that we don't know if they got if they reached the event or had the event occur or not. And so we've got uh, fairly small percentages of, of subjects that have been censored. Okay, the next thing we look at is a survival table, and what this shows us is the actual events in each group. So the first person in group that was taking drug A in, in group A, this is the point at which they died. Okay, and then it does that for every subject in each group and it gives us an idea of the uh, proportion um, surviving at the time. So at the time, we still have, after one person died, we still have basically 99% of the group still surviving, and it keeps track of that for us. So these can be very large tables depending on the number of subjects we have. Okay, the next thing we can look at is the descriptives for each of our groups, so the means and medians. And so uh, in this case, having examined the outcomes, I know the outcomes, um, the outcome is skewed. And so and when I look at and describe the, the uh, data as well as the groups, I'm going to use the median. If I had a normally distributed outcome, then I would use the mean. And I know that each group on the outcome is skewed. And so as I report descriptively, um, the the survival times for each of the groups, I'm going to use the median. Um, if they were normally distributed, then I would use the mean. So the median time to survival from each group is presented here. So I've got uh, drug A had a median survival of 50 months, drug B had a median survival of 45, and drug C had a median survival of 40. And then I get the standard error as well as the confidence intervals for each of these groups. 
And as we look at these groups, we can look at the confidence intervals to see if we have overlap. And as you can see here, uh, we do have overlap. So the lower bound of group A crosses the upper bound of group B. Um, the upper bound of group C crosses the lower bound of group B. So there's some definite overlap here. So what this is telling us in other samples, we might see very different um, median survivals. And so this indicates to me that um, if there is statistical significance among these three survival curves, that it's probably not clinically significant. So to give you an example, um, another sample of people getting drug A might have a, a median survival of 42 months, where an, another group of drug B participants could have a median survival of 49 months. And so their, their relative places compared to one another as far as length of survival could be very different. So that's something to look at as far as clinical meaningfulness of these survival curves. Okay, the next thing we can do is go ahead and look at the actual survival curves. And again, these are estimates of survival based upon uh, our samples. And so we're going to see, uh, depending on how many groups we have, we're going to see that number of curves. So we have three groups, so we're going to see three curves here. So the blue is, represents the survival curve for drug A. Green, re green represents for drug B, and this light gray represents for drug C. So as we look at this, what we're looking for is kind of separation among these curves. And you can see um, early on, at the beginning, when everyone is alive, all three curves are going to be together, and the survival probability will be 1 or 100%. As the curves progress down and to the right, you'll see the probability of survival becomes lower and lower until everyone has had the event occur and now probability is zero. So as we look at this, we can look for separation. So at the beginning, the curves are going to be very close to one another. And it looks like as we progress early on in the time frame, there is some separation among our three curves. And then as we progress, we see the curves kind of meet again and stay pretty close until everyone has had the event occur. Now it looks like in all three groups that pretty much the last people in each of the group had the event occur around the same time. So the last people in group A, B, and C all seem to die at about the same time. Now what we might see, for example, is as a curve progresses, it might then come straight down at one point. And so what this indicates then is all the people in that group have had the event occur. So all the people in group A, for example, may have died if group A's curve suddenly drops straight down and ends. And so we might see that in some curves where a curve might be progressing along and all of a sudden it takes a, seems to take a dive straight down into the uh, x-axis. And when that happens, that means that all the subjects in that group have had the event occur or in, the, in our case or our example have died. So we can see very similar curves here um, in this sample, and it looks like the longest survival that we have is somewhere in the neighborhood of around 100 and maybe 130 months or so. Okay, now our next step is to look at uh, whether or not these three groups are significantly different as far as their curves are concerned. And so again, remember, these are estimates based upon the sample that we have. But we can do a statistical test, a significance test, to determine what might actually happen in the population. So it'll give us an idea of whether or not these um, curves would be very similar or maybe very different if they are different from one another in the population at large. And so now we can do this comparison among our three curves. And so what we're going to do is look at these three comparison tests that we talked about. And remember, each one has kind of a different focus. And so, uh, as I mentioned before, the log uh, rank test tends to focus more on what happens later in time. And so what we look at is the SIG, or significance value. And if this significance value is less than 0.05, then we would say that the three curves are statistically significant in their difference. Now remember, the log rank test tends to look more at what happens later in the time course. So as we look at later in the time course, over here towards the right, we can see that the curves are very similar to one another. And that's reflected by this significance value that's quite a bit above 0.05. And so we could say that 
the curves are not statistically significant for one another, especially as we think about them later in the time course. Now, the uh, Breslow test tends to look at what's happening earlier in the time course, so more in this area of the set of curves. And so we can see here the Breslow test is showing statistical significance, which is borne out by looking, especially right here, where we can really start to see some separation among all three curves. And so that, would, that could be interpreted as saying that if we're talking about kind of the early portion of the time course, um, that the three groups are statistically significant. And it looks like drug C has a lower probability of survival at this time point, and it appears that drug A has the higher probability of survival. Now lastly, we can look at the trone where um, outcome. And it has a p-value above 0.05, but it's it's closer to 0.05 than it, than it's not closer to 0.05. And again, this is looking at more of the middle of the time course, which would be somewhere probably in here. Um, and even though there's no statistical significance, um, it does appear to be getting close to statistical significance. We've got a, a fairly large sample size here, 1,200 subjects, so. Um, that probably is really what's happening in the population um, based upon that number of subjects. And so we can use all three of these tests to, to really try and interpret any differences that might be there between our three survival curves. Now if all three of these were greater than 0.05 then we would say that you know there, there really is no difference among the survival curves between the three groups. Uh, if all three of these showed significance, then we could say pretty definitively that all three curves are statistically significant. When we have this kind of mixed result like this, we, can, we have to interpret this as being that at certain points in the time course, or the passage of time, there could be statistical significance, but at other parts there, there are not. So that's a little trickier interpretation with this type of analysis. So to summarize, we've used uh, this Kaplan-Meier Kaplan -Meier technique to look at survival curves, uh, basically how long it takes for a group of subjects to reach a certain event, and we will look at the probability of reaching that event at certain time points. Uh, and we can also compare these survival curves based upon some sort of categorical variable like a treatment, or we could use gender, or we could use age, or any other type of categorical variable to kind of separate out these curves to see if they have an effect on the curves. So hopefully you learned something in this video, and good luck in using this analysis in your own research.